We've all been transported to worlds beyond our wildest imagination with books. But books are also a great vehicle to get together and exchange ideas. Welcome to Books du Jour. Come and join our authors at the table. Barry Lancet, who is an American, who is an expat, you know, it's one of that uh, very few Americans that actually live abroad, probably more and more of you probably do that. Uh, two novels, the first one is Japan Town, uh, this is thriller, and the next one where apparently it was uh, optioned by J.J. Abrams, Tokyo Kill, right, both mm -hmm. thrillers. So you, uh, before we go into your books, I, I, I'm fascinated by uh, your journey as a person. Uh, well, you, you, so you're American. Yes. Both parents are Americans in yes. the U.S. Where, which state so is that text? Um, I grew up in California. I was okay. actually born in Ohio okay. when my father went there for a short job and okay. before going back to California, but basically California. So it was a very short pregnancy then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he from, complained the whole time. Okay. So California is a northern south, uh, it's a very different Southern South California. People. Okay, San Diego or over there, yeah. Uh, Los Angeles, but I had family on both sides, okay. so that's why Japantown is set in San Francisco, because mm -hmm. I had my mother's side of the family was in San Francisco, father's was in L.A., so we were kind of always, I was like a ping pong ball back and forth. Uh, so you moved to Japan when you were in your early 20s, or? That's, well, later 20s, yeah, and uh, I went there for a visit, and, I, and, and then I went to Europe, and I was looking for a place to live overseas for a short time, and somehow just Japan stuck with me. But you, did you do like a Japanese studies for no. a BA? Nothing no. at all? No. So you went to Japan with no Japanese? I went to Japan knowing nothing. Knowing nothing. <laughs> not Worse your, than no one. Not even yourself, studies. probably, right? Yeah. Trying to find yourself. But when I got there, I saw something so different. And okay. the, I, the aesthetic and everything, I, I, I could recognize yeah. something. And, and that's what got people, me People say that uh, Japanese yeah. is I mean, it's a, uh, sort of a Zen country. It has yeah. a different vibe and a different right. mindset. And, uh, it really jars you up. Even though the cities are different, the way they, they move, and it doesn't seem to be like big avenues. Everything seems to be, I don't know, to me it seems very narrow every time. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a misperception, but you feel that way, no? Yeah, they're, they are smaller in scale, but they're yeah. vibrant, and they use space differently, and there's just, and they, the little touches that appear in detail here and there, yeah. it's just really nice, and they're usually traditional things. There might be a little, little, bit of a shoji screen in one mm. corner or something like that. So how long have you been in Japan? Uh, more than 25 years. More than 25 years, okay. Uh, let's talk about Japanese uh, people and mindset. Have you seen The Cove? The uh, documentary? I know it, yes. Yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet, but I know all about it because I've, I know a lot of people. There apparently there was like, you know, a complete ban on the film over there in Japan. You yes, know, that's right. Saying, yeah. uh, it's talking about the uh, massacre of dolphin and being that's right, radioactive, yeah. yeah? So let's talk about uh, the nuclear... Uh, Meltdown. Yeah. You can talk about that. I was there. You were you were there. Okay. I was there. So, uh, how does that parlay into the, the population? The uh, water contamination, the the nuclear the waste going into the sea water. Well, yeah. The people close to the accident, you know, they've had to vacate, and they're not coming back. And a lot so of them thought they lost they were, everything. They, they've lost everything. They think they they thought they were coming back in five or ten years. Mm. And the government didn't tell them otherwise, but it's very clear yeah. now. And they know now they're not going to be back for several generations, if that. Yeah. So it's a shame. And Is it sealed? Is it, is it all here? No, it's still, well, it's basically sealed, yes, yeah. but there's still problems. And now they have to dismantle the, we're talking about the Fukushima yeah. uh, the nuclear three plant. Yeah. Is the main one. They're dismantling, and that's supposed to take 40 years. To dismantle everything and put it and, and because of our, because of the radiation yeah, the leakage yeah yeah and uh, it's just it's just they build them solidly and to take them apart in the proper way yeah. it just takes time so yeah. so you live in Tokyo right yeah which is far away but not in, not in the radioactive world it's pretty close yeah it was close and we were worried and everybody uh, a lot of people I know are Geiger counters and Tokyo seems to be okay yeah. And I had friends in that area, and in fact, I lost touch with one of them for two years. We thought he'd, he'd, he lived on the ocean, uh, or he lived about uh, you know 100 yards in from the beach, and we thought he'd been swept out to sea with a tsunami. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get, we couldn't get a hold of him for, for two years. And but we sent a New Year's card every year, and the second or third one we sent, we got an answer. Uh. He was relocated. You know, and it was just a mess. Thousands and thousands of people, and so. It's suddenly like he'd come back from the dead, but suddenly our friend was alive. So that was kind of a small miracle in yeah. our book. 
So you're going to be writing about that in the future? Or? Yeah. I'm Not about the friends, but the, the, the nuclear <laughs> meltdown. I'm going to do well, something. You can write about your friends too if you want to. <laughs> My Japanese friends, I should say I should not do it. Not all of them. Some of them because the government, people will get mad at me. Over The officials in Japan will get mad at me. But I'm a resident there, and I feel that I have to write something. And so I will uh, eventually. Uh, so how did the writing come about for you? So because you, you said like you were in Europe and you mm -hmm. end up in Japan doing nothing and were you already scribbling notes here? No, and there, I or? came to it very late. Okay. And uh, originally, I don't know, somewhere in my mid twenties, I, I I got this jolt that said, and I started reading a lot of interesting books, and I was, I just thought I got to write something, and I didn't know really what I wanted to write. Yeah. I didn't have a theme, and but I knew I wanted to write something. I knew I could write something, and. I just got this bug, and it wouldn't go away. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, it's like a chocolate craving or something like that. But I was, uh, uh, I read and I read and I read, and then I went to Japan. And I said, well, maybe I can write something about Japan. Mm -hmm. But then I said, I didn't know what, uh, because I was still too new, and there's just too many things I was exploring and that I didn't know. And then one day, uh, after I was there about a year, I got called in for a voluntary interview with the police. They called my house, okay. and they said, you have to come down tomorrow. I wasn't there. They called my wife answered and they, and, and they told me I should come down on a Sunday morning for a voluntary interview. And that's all they said. And so when I came so home... So you'd have to go? Yeah. <laughs> you do have to go? You don't. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's voluntary. Like, if you, don't, if you don't go down, they're throwing you out of the country. Oh, <laughs> so really? Okay. That so kind of voluntary. Kind of right, yeah. And um, so I went down. I, they didn't tell anybody, but my wife said, you know, well, what did you do? And I said, I didn't do anything. They said, you must have done something. The police don't call if you didn't do anything. I said, I didn't do a thing. She said, yes, you did, because the police called. And then her parents got in, and, and suddenly I was a criminal. They thought I had a criminal living under their roof. And I said, I'm telling you, I didn't do anything. So I went down the next day, and they threw me into an interview room and slammed the door, and I was there for 45 minutes, twiddling my thumbs and just wondering what this was about. And then a very suave sort of debonair guy comes in, full head of silver hair, wearing a suit, and he starts interrogating me. In, in, in Japanese, right? No, I didn't speak Japanese at that time, because oh, okay. I'd only been there a year. And so the problem was there weren't very many police officers who spoke English. So this is the guy that had to do it. And he was the only one, apparently. So he had to play good cop and bad cop okay. at the same time, or some variation of that. But he was very clever, he was very smart, and he was very subtle. And he started in with a series of questions and things. and. I realized that if I didn't answer these questions correctly, he was going to throw me out of the country. And so it went on for three hours. And I was angry, as you might be angry if somebody questioned you oh, like this sort of thing. But slowly, I got fascinated with his technique. And my anger disappeared because I was just fascinated with this cat and mouse game. And that's what happened. And then I, when I got out of that and I survived, I thought, maybe I can write a mystery thriller well, on that. Japan. That's how. Long answer. Sorry for that. Okay. So this is uh, Japan Town, right? Yep. What we're talking about? Yes. So the, the, what's the story in a nutshell? I mean, uh, is it a main character? Sure. Is it you or uh, is it someone who could be you? The main character is, is, is named Jim Brody. He's American. He's American living in Japan. Uh, born of Caucasian parents okay. who lived in Japan, went to Japanese schools, learns the language, culture, all that. Culture, right. So like me, except for he, he went to Japanese schools, which I never did. And... Uh, and it opens in Japan, in San Francisco, Japantown, with the perfect murder and one clue that nobody can read. And that's a Japanese character on a piece of paper at the crime scene in a pool of blood. Mm -hmm. That's how it opens. So it's scribble notes you're talking about? Yeah. Well, it's like a character. A oh, character, character. actually. Yeah, yeah, like okay. one of those, a bit, bit of calligraphy. OK. And that's how it opens. The police don't know what to make of it. They call in Jim Brody, who's a Japan expert. Mm -hmm. And he comes in, he looks at it, and he says, it, well, his house covered in blood. He says, if that's the character I think it is, I've only seen it once before, and it doesn't exist. Because I've looked for it and haven't found it. And that's how it starts. And then he, they ask him, they make him a consultant. They ask him to try and track it down, who the murderer is. And so as he follows what leads he can from San Francisco to Tokyo and then beyond into the Japanese countryside, He's hunting this down, and he realizes somebody is hunting him. Somebody or something is hunting him. Mm -hmm. And that's how it opens. Yeah. And then well, we have to find out, uh, read the book, and uh, to see what happens to him, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, so, so you decided to go for another novel after that? Or, or you, 
you have to find an agent first and get the feedback and then you offer a contract for two or three books. Yeah, I found an agent for the first book. Uh, in uh, Japan or here? Uh, here, a guy, uh, Robert Gott. Gottlieb at uh, Trident Media. Oh, Trident. Oh, yeah, he's a big name. He's yeah, a big guy. He's yeah. a big, he's a big guy. Yeah, yeah. And he, he called me when I was in Tokyo. He called me and we talked and he wanted to represent the book. Mm -hmm. And then about eight months later, he, he it was preempted by Simon and Schuster. Okay. And they originally were going to sign up for one, sign me up for one book. And, and when I was talking to the editor before she made an offer, she said, well, are you working on anything else? And I said, yes. And she says, what? I said, well, a second book on with the same character. Mm -hmm. And then there was just sort of silence and she went on and asked me, characters. And then the, then the agent and the publisher went back and forth with their offers. And then Simon Schuster came back with, instead of a single book deal, a two book deal, if, it's, if it was the same character. If it's they liked the character. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. his name is in the contract. Okay. Above my name. Okay, I was going to say, is your name in the contract? Okay. You could yeah, kick it out. Yeah, his name is there too. I think it's a bigger type. Is it, is it Simon Schuster or is it an imprint? It's Simon and Schuster okay. proper, yeah. Uh, so it could be a trio or whatever. Yeah, well, they're all good. They're all good, yeah, especially for crime, yeah. So what is it like to get a book deal? I was extremely happy because mm -hmm. way back when I wanted to write this, and you know you know how it goes, it's very hard. Uh, I worked very hard. I, I rewrote this any number of times, and, uh, and everybody's been great. The editor has been great. The Simon Schuster has been great. My agent's been great. Everybody's nice yeah. because everybody likes books. That's the thing. Everybody likes what they're doing. Yeah, and so cool. it's just a very pleasant uh, thing to work in. Right. What did you do in Japan? I was actually, was actually a, a book editor okay. for oh. a major publisher, uh, in, uh, in a Japanese Japan? publisher. Oh, so you, you're pretty good in Japanese and writing as well. Well, right? no, I was, I was working for their English language arm, and okay. we did some translations, a lot of original books. I acquired and developed books and things like that. So I did that for about 20 years or a little more, and that turned out to be... I was studying for doing these because oh, yeah, every course, you yeah. absorb everything, all these books you do, yeah. and I met it a lot like of logical people. transition almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, what sort of book did you acquire? Or did you edit? A crime um, or just a... mostly nonfiction, art books, history books, Asian philosophy. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything sometimes uh, Zen garden books, anything that on on the Asian side, and some American anything on Asia and Japan, mm. and then some American. Um, I did some American art books as well. No. So you're a great person to talk to because you've been in the publishing business in Japan. Amazon is in Japan now, but are they shifting the, the landscape in Japan? It's a great question. The um, Amazon arrived in Japan after they were, you know, had been here a number of years. Sure, yeah. And the Japanese saw what was going on here. Mm. So the publishers in Japan got together and have kind of held on to their digital rights, and they're being very careful how they dole them out. And so... Um, it's moving a little bit differently than it is here. Here they saw how you know, things changed so rapidly and, and the publishers, bookstores, everybody didn't really have a chance to adapt. Yeah, just and so they were worried because in Japan there's a very close working relationship between the publisher, the distributor, and the bookstores. And they've, you know, they're all, they figured they're all part of the same thing. Sure. And so they were very careful about that. And it's still ongoing. So Amazon is, not, is struggling over there a little bit? Or? I think they're doing fine. They've got you know, a bit of the market too, but there oh, are yeah. other people doing the same sort of thing. And it's, I think it's more democratic. They don't have such a large share. Like a monopoly. But, you know, I mean, they're doing things. There are, there, are, there are now one or two imitators of Amazon in Japan, you know, and so there's a lot going on. Yeah, and it's also a very big and crowded country. Yeah. Well, thank you for being with us. My guest was Barry Lensitz in um, Japan Town, which is it? Is it out already? Or? It's out now. That's the hardcover. It's yes. out in paperback now. When did it come out? Oh, so it's already. So it's been this a few came months, out so. September. Okay. Last year, and the paperback's out this month. And it's been doing well. Yes, it's been doing beautiful. Very, so wish you all the best with the next thank one. Thank you very much. Tokyo Kill, coming out September 2014. That's the one we should be talking about. Then. Okay. Thank you for being on Book Sojour.